Make no mistake, today's manufacturing is not your grandfather's manufacturing. The devices employed in machine shops like Mills machines are as expensive as they are impressive and they continue to evolve. In our continuing conversation, I asked Chuck Mills how we keep up in business and in education. I, I've been in your facility, I've been in your facility, and the machines I see in both of them aren't cheap. How do you do that? How do you, how do you afford to do that? <laughs> how do you afford not to do it? I, I, I'll give you an example. We provide a standard line of drilling tools and bits, shallow drilling, not really a long drilling. So, uh, but we still offer custom manufacturing so we can continue to solve problems, just special problems, in drilling. But we have to have kind of both. Well, when we made the move from the manual equipment to the CNC equipment, so it's all computerized, uh, it's expensive and it's painful, especially when you compare the price. But here's, here's what, the, what happened. Talking about the workforce shortage issue that we have, we determined that one machine would do what four people and four machine would do manually. So it's like, okay, we can't get workers, so we're gonna have to have equipment unfortunately, to replace those workers. Uh, but it also increases our productivity, efficiency, and competitiveness. So when you take also and build cells where you've got one person in the middle of two or three machines, now that one person with their benefits and that overhead can now produce what virtually 12 people would. Now, that's huge. Advanced manufacturing. And that that's where we start being competitive with the rest of the world. And Tim, I've heard you call them, not blue collar jobs, but? Gold collar jobs. You know, the people that understand how to analyze that piece of equipment, whether it's operating correctly, how to program it, how to, how to do the diagnostic uh, 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 review of it. How is it, is it performing at its efficiency? If there's something wrong, what is it that's wrong with it? Whether it's hydraulics or electronics or whatever it may be, Somebody that knows how to do that, they're in short supply, and they're not quite quite uh, name their price in the industry, but they're pretty close to it. And we have a huge shortage in the world of individuals like that. But again, I like our chances of producing more of them, specifically because of what our career tech system can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that technology is helping us in some ways. We know that training is certainly helping us in some ways. What are some of the other answers when we talk about developing workforce here in the state? I, I, I'm, again, very opinionated, as you very well know. I think we have to do a better job of explaining what wealth generation in employment is. And I think we have to talk to not only little Johnny and Susie in, in Oklahoma, we need to talk to little Johnny and Susie's parents about what that means as well. Let's start talking to them about wealth generating jobs and where they can go if they pursue a certificate from a career tech. That can also lead to higher education at the same time. I think we've got to, to also do, and this blends quite well with what Tim just said, I think we've really got to uh, do a better job of, of career counseling people. I'm not advocating uh, some European methodology of education here where we, where we sort and, 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 track people. And, and, and track people. What I'm advocating is we want parents and kids to be exposed to the many opportunities that kids have. Uh, and I think the younger they're exposed to those many opportunities, the better off they're going to be, the better decision they're going to make. Uh, I think one of the things that we've done in the United States is that we have, uh, there's this rite of passage that when you become 18 years of age, that you immediately matriculate in this pathway. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure everyone is ready intellectually, emotionally, socially, to matriculate that way. And so uh, it, it, there's a lot of aspects to it, but I, I do believe that we've got to help more people understand a lot of different options and really do quality career counseling. I think the parent aspect is so important here because I don't know how many times I've had friends apologize to me when they're telling me what their child is doing if they're not going on to get that four-year degree or their master's or anything like that. And many times these same parents after the, the young person's graduated with a degree they can't really market themselves with. <laughs> but Rob, the, the career tech system offers 
marketable and transferable skills. That's what's so important. And, and I agree with Marty 100%. Let's, let's talk about K-20. Let's not talk K-12 and career tech and higher ed. Let's talk about systemic, continued, lifelong uh, education, because that, that's important. But if you're creating marketable and transferable skills and you have a downturn in the energy business, which heaven knows in Oklahoma, we've seen enough of those. If you have those marketable and transferable skills, you can immediately transcend into another type of a, of a career or employment and, you, and, and your livelihood continues. And it may not be at the same level of income, but you're not destitute because all you know is one specific thing. And again, the marketable and transferable skills is so critical. And, and we have the opportunity in this state to lead the rest of the nation to do that. We can do that better and faster and, and cheaper, quite frankly, than anybody else in the United States. Mm -hmm. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much.